Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to share with you uh, a variety of experiences, but I really don't want to go into what actually happened as regards the learning. I want to focus on um, the actual development of, of, of partners, and I'm not going to call them industry partners. The reason I haven't said industry is because those people were a mix of people from industry, people from Flinders Uni, Uni SA Adelaide Uni, as well as community. So a local footy club, local gym owner. So we've got to be careful when we go industry partners, industry connections, because industry is not always the most relevant thing. And indeed, if, you, if you're teaming up with a council, they're not really industry either. So I, I like to call them all community, but you can call them what you want, really. But I think that's the wider scope of going, what is a partner and who are you going to bring in? So three years ago, I started my position there as senior leader. And when I came into the school, um, we were probably a typical school in terms of how we connected with people outside the school. We had our typical speakers in. We went out to different places doing things, what typically happens in a school. I'd say we probably did it a bit more than other schools, but it wasn't, it wasn't atypical. It wasn't any different, there, I don't think, than anywhere else. But within that first year, uh, in my first year at the school, um, a, a few of our teachers got involved with ASMS on their problem-based learning project, so their professional development there. And during that journey, those teachers uh, wanted to put something together where they wanted authentic problems um, involved in their projects. And this started to really change the landscape because this started to up the game as to what they wanted and what they, what they really saw as being those authentic connections. Because let me just say that if you, if you think you're doing STEM and you haven't got links, uh, authentic links, then you, you might as well go home because it's a waste of time because that's what, essentially what STEM's about. But then uh, things began to change last year at our school considerably when um, we went whole scale PBL in year eight. So the whole of year eight come into our school and they do theme units per term, um, a new unit each term, and that brings together HASS, English, Maths and Science. So you can imagine that was a, a real large scale change within the school. And as I talked about authenticity before, that also requires a lot of connection with people outside the school. So these people who are outside of the school are not necessarily from industry, they can be from all sorts of different areas, and they were brought together to provide problems which the students could work on. So I brought 12 into the school. Now I'll let that sit with you for just a few seconds. That's 12 people into the school, which I would never do again because that's ridiculous and it will age you. So we did, all, we did that and we'll be doing that again this year. I certainly won't be doing it with 12, I'll we'll be doing it with max four, maybe two, maybe even one, and a variety of problems within one, but we'll see. The, if you are going to bring people in is try and try and think that it that it's got to be more than somebody to come and speak to your kids now there's nothing wrong with somebody coming and speak to your kids sometimes but realistically does the average year 10 want to sit there and listen for an hour while somebody talks about being a um I don't know, being a submarine um, engineer or something like that when that's not their pathway, but that's what typically happens. You know, it's not rewarding for the person who's coming in and it's not rewarding for most of the kids either. Like a lecture is not really that rewarding for most students, that's why they don't go to them in university. So, you know, this idea of having somebody coming to, just to speak to the kids, really? Is that what you want to do or do you want more than that? I broke some things down of what I've learned and some tips and tricks along the way. So first of all, collaboration. How do you get these people? Where, where do you get them from? How do you get them? Because that's one of the biggest questions I often get asked. So my first tip is use other people's networks. Now when I say other people, yeah, I know that teachers have a very limited social life, but you do have friends that are not teachers. You do, everybody does. And if you don't, then you need to get some friends that are not teachers. And if you've got those friends, then you need to talk to those people and go, well, what do you, you know, and talk to them about what they do and who they work with and all those kinds of things. And that can bring some really interesting avenues, it really can. But when you're talking to them, having your mind, you know, the little divisive, the little things, little sparks going off in your head, going, oh yeah, and that could work in there, and that could work here, and that could work there. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to cold call them going, oh, because you're doing that, you've got to come to my school. No, you don't have to do that to begin with. But, you know, if they are friends, they, you know, you've got to work those angles. And when I say use other people's networks, it's not just what they do, it's who they know do things as well. And they're not just friends, they can be family members, but they can also be other teachers as well. So if another teacher's got a network going or got some problem providers, why not use them as well? But be careful not to overuse. 
So the next thing is clarity and purpose. When you do find people, or you think you're gonna find people, is make sure you've got an elevator pitch. Now that's an elevator pitch that you can say orally. Elevator means it's, you've only got the ride of the, elevant, uh, the elevator to actually talk about what you're gonna talk about. So make sure you're pretty succinct about what you want from people. What do you want? Not, oh, that's interesting. I'd quite like you to come into our school. So what? What, when? What am I doing? Why? Why would I do that? So all those things that you, you need a purpose for why you want them to come. You need to know why, what you want them to do when they're there, what exactly their role can be. And that elevator pitch should also be in a, a form that you can send out by email as well. I learned that pretty quick. These people haven't got time to listen to you waffle on about what's good for your students. They're not really that interested, most of them. Most of them have got jobs to do. So it's having it succinct in there for them. So materials and elevator pitch with specific information on. However, don't be too specific and don't rely totally on that. In other words, have a backup plan. So you may talk to somebody and you may want them to be a problem provider who comes in three times and you want them to spend hours and hours at your school, but they may turn around and go, I'm not doing that. So then what else can they do? Oh, well, if you're not gonna do that, can you do this? Oh, and if you're not gonna do that, can you do this? And you might end up with just a speaker. But if you've got a speaker, then at least you've got something because later on they might become someone who becomes a problem provider. Just don't bring them in for an hour. The final tips I'll give you is work on instinct. So if you have got an instinct that somebody's gonna be a good problem provider, a good person to work with, then they probably are. If you've got an instinct they're actually gonna be really rubbish and boring in front of your kids, then they probably are gonna be really rubbish and boring in front of your kids. However, there'll be some people who'll surprise you, both negatively and positively. And that's the last one I'd like to come to, is proofs in the pudding. So if someone comes up as a, um, comes to work with you in your school and you're thinking, how am I gonna make this sustainable? Are they gonna be any good? And they actually prove to be pretty damn amazing. That's the proof in the pudding. Thanks.